No country can truly flourish if it stifles the potential of its women and deprives itself of contribution of half its citizens. This is an important quote by Michelle Obama. A very good afternoon to all virtually connected with us. I extend a warm welcome to the chief guest of today's program, Dr. Sunita Zalpuri, Dean Trainee Welfare, Professor and Head GD and AR JNK in Par. Dr. Renu Gupta, Vice Chairperson, My Group of Institutions in Essentia. Dr. Adit Gupta, Director, Mayer and Principal, My College of Education in Absentia. Dr. Rupa, uh, Mrs. Rupa Gupta, Joint Director, Mayer and Director, Center for Women's Studies. Our respected judges of the symposium, Mrs. Man uh, Manjuri Sengal, Manager Academics, Model Academy, and Mrs. Manju Wali, Convener Co-Curricular Committee. HODs of UG and PG Department, Dr. Ronika Sharma and Dr. Mulrat Sharma. Deputy HODs, Dr. Mishka Rana and Dr. Monica Bajaj. All the faculty members and students present with us today. As we all know that Srimati Shanti Gupta Center for Women's Studies of my College of Education is organizing a symposium on the topic, is gender equality possible for women in the present world scenario? I would like to request Mrs. Supa Gupta, Joint Director Meyer and Director CWS to kindly present a formal welcome and introduce the chief guest to the dignitaries and students. Ma'am, please. Thank you so much, Kobal ma'am. Thank you so much. On behalf of Mayer College of Education, Excuse me, ma'am, your voice is not audible. I think there is some internet uh, issue. Kobal ma'am. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Your voice is audible, but okay. uh, video is not. Um, okay, it's okay. Let the voice be there. <laughs> no worries. Yes. Okay, so I'll start the again. So good afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Meyer College of Education, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to the online and feel grateful that so many distinguished teachers and to explore better ways of educating and empowering women all over the world. I would like to express my deep appreciation for our chief guest, Dr. Sunita Zalpuri Kaur, Dean Trainee Welfare, Professor and Head, Center for Good Governance and Administrative Reforms, Jen K. Imbar, for accepting our invitation. My warm welcome to you, ma'am. I have known Dr. Zalpuri for a very long time, but lost touch with her. And I must thank our vice chairperson for renewing our bond again. A very hardworking and dedicated woman who, in spite of so many responsibilities, has risen to higher position in life. She is a recognized master trainer and have delivered trainings in almost all the prestigious advanced training institutes of the country, like Indian Institute of Public Administration, Indian Institute of Sector Training and Management, New Delhi, Rajasthan Institute of Public Administration, and many more. Apart from trainings, she has also tutored and evaluated more than 30 training design projects as part of recognized trainer for design of training course. Bangkok and Hyderabad. 
organizers for the Department of Personal and Training, Government of India. She was also honored with Women Achiever Award for the year 2010. There are so many other accolades that she has received that I don't have enough words to express my appreciation for her. Ma'am, thank you so much for you know join, joining us today. I wish you all the best for all your future endeavors. I would also thank uh, and express my gratitude uh, for our Vice Chairperson, Dr. Renu Gupta, and Principal Dr. Adit Gupta for their invaluable support and advice in organizing different events for the college. I take this opportunity to extend my warm welcome to the HODs of UG and PT department, Dr. Ronika Shah. Education. share knowledge and experience in empowering women, but also in the beginning devoted to the worthwhile cause of teaching Education. Komal ma'am, you can start again. Yes ma'am, yes ma'am. You can start now ma'am with the Ma'am, your ma'am, with uh, ma'am, actually, I cannot hear you properly. And participant now, yeah. okay, ma'am, should I start with the symposium? Hello, Hanji, ma'am. Ma'am, symposium start karein. Aapka welcome bohat rada mitko. Welcome. Proceeding further, uh, now we will start with the symposium on the topic. Is gender equality possible for women in present world scenario? Every participant will get three to four minutes to deliberate on the topic. And uh, the criteria of judgment will be relevance of the content, expression, presentation, and confidence. So beginning with the first uh, participant, I would request uh, Divya to kindly uh, start uh, with her uh, delegation. Kumal ma'am, could you please uh, repeat the name of the student? It was not audible. Ma'am, Divya. Divya ma'am. Vidya. Divya. Divya, Divya. D-I-V-Y-A. -E yes. Divya from uh, PG department. MX. Yes, Divya. Divya? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I think the uh, students uh, uh, must be suffering some of them from the connectivity issues as well. Uh, we can speak later. Uh, now I request Palak to kindly uh, start with her then, uh, to speak on the topic. Palak Srivastava from BS. Yes, ma'am. Um, shall I start? Yes, yes, Pan. In the words of Anderson, feminism is not about making women stronger. Women are already strong. 
it's about changing the way the world perceives that strength warm greetings to the august gathering present on the platform of mar college of education i am palak shrivastav of ba third semester and it gives me immense pleasure to speak on the topic is gender equality possible for women in the present world scenario and i feel elated as i am a female gender equality means that different behavior aspirations and needs of men and women are considered valued and favored equally it does not mean that men and women have to become same but their rights responsibilities and opportunities will not depend whether they are born as male or female women are primary caretakers and uh, primary caretakers of children and uh, adults in every country of the world international studies demonstrate that when the economy and the political organization of a society changes women take the lead to help the family to adjust to realities and challenges gender equality is not only a fundamental human right but a foundation for peaceful purposeful and sustainable world there has been progress in the last few decades more girls are going to school fewer girls are forced into early marriages and women are serving in parliament and higher position in political environment despite of such advances there remain many challenges women are continued to be underrepresented at all levels of political leadership and one in five women and girls between the age of 15 and 49 report experiencing physical and sexual violence by an intimate partner within a 12 period month i think gender equality basically begins in the mind of an individual it is the individual perception of taking other person at par with himself or herself it does not happen in one day it is something that you do every day observing a mothers day or a fathers day or an international women's day is meaningless if you don't understand the crux meaning of equality ultimately it is something that you need to internalize in yourself and reflect in your actions without this purely focusing on observations will not help to become to uh, enhance equality while concluding i would say langik asamanta se peedit samaj hai bharat ko badlav ki zarurat aaj hai nari mein dhairya sahan shakti ki shakti hai itni aane wale daur mein कामयाबी भी कदम चूमेगी इनकी अपनी सोच को बदलना होगा नारी और पुरुष में फर्क करना छोड़ना होगा थैंक यू थैंक यू पलक आर नेक्स्ट पार्टिसिपेंट इज शिखा शर्मा फ्रॉम एम एल शिखा yes ma'am yes bachche you can start good afternoon everyone present here today i shikha sharma from pg department of my college of education going to share my views on is gender equality is possible for women in the present scenario gender it refers to both female and male and the relations between them the term gender equality do we really put into practice yes we have achieved the concept of gender equality in the contemporary society now the governments are always talking about the treatment uh, the fair treatment for everyone for both the genders therefore the concept of gender to, needs to be understood clearly everyone should be treated fairly expected and valued their values have we can be promoted in the past gender equality leads to be hardly to be achieved it is because there are a lot of wrong concepts for both the genders even in the minds of every human 
now there is a big difference in gender gap between male and female in as compared to the society now today we all are accelerating efforts on advancing the gender equality and promoting women's achievement while ensuring their same status as compared to the male so uh, so that the gender gaps will be reduced and will not slow down the development now the government promote the gender equality in many aspects as in education employment and emphasizing the fair treatment for both genders male and female now the society gives a lot of efforts on the process of being fair to both genders and also makes a big step on changing to compensate for women's historical and social disadvantages on them to ensure that women Hello, can receive the same status and the level as compared to men in the end i would like to conclude by saying that now women have more uh, chances to control over resources and actions to transform the structures and the institutions which reinforce the gender discriminations so they have the freedom to participate to love to protect fully and equally in the society now thank you and have a nice day thank you shikha now i request anjushri to kindly uh, speak on the topic anjushri anjushri yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, okay yes. bachche you can start yes ma'am i'm done i'm okay ma'am i dream a world where a man no other man will scorn where love will bless the earth and peace its path adorn i dream a world where all will know the sweetness of freedom where the wretchedness will hang its head and joy like a pearl attends the need of all mankind i dream my world like this i am jishri from ba third semester welcomes you all and i feel immense pleasure to speak on the topic which is is gender equality for women possible in today's scenario so let's let's take today's example like uh, our chief guest is respected women and the judge is also one of the women so we can say that yes we have equality and there is no need to fight for our position because we have taken our stand we have taken our determination so so women are the epitome of strength love sacrifice and courage the role of women in today's world are now self sufficient well aware and financially independent they have a, they have attained immense success whether it is in the field of sports academics or any other field in the previous time we knew that women were the possession of man they used to depend on their father their husband for the financial activities but today we are independent of our own activities and we can spend our life in our own way the success to every key so empowering women would become more pertinent if women were well informed and with men taking the examples of mother teresa indira nuri pratibha patil kalna chawla and a lot more have been very significant in their own sphere and are ideal for every woman in india across the globe the journey of liberation of women has crossed many milestones and the society has indeed come a long way they have struggled hard over the last few decades but still been able to successfully establish their own identity today women are adorned with patience and perseverance which has helped them to attain the pinnacle of success so at last quoting this symposium i would like to say the best thermometer to progress of a nation is it treatment of its women there is no chance for welfare of the world unless the condition of women is improved thank you thank you anjushri 
now i would uh, request naima to kindly uh, speak on the topic naima from pg department naima yes ma'am yes bachche you can start women if the soul of nation is to be saved i believe must have its soul good afternoon to all valued guests were the teachers management committee and beloved participants i naima ahmed student of mayer college of education from ma semester 3 i am going to share my point of view on is gender equality possible for women in present world scenario as we all know gender describe the society constructed roles and responsibilities that society is constructed appropriate for men and women gender equality means that men and women have equal power equal opportunities for financial independence education and personal development women empowered is a critical aspect of achieving gender equality it includes increasing a woman sense of self worth and her decision making power her access to opportunities her access to his own life inside and outside home and her ability that affect change globally no country has fully attained gender equality but some countries norway iceland sweden that leads and closing the gender gap in these countries there is relatively equitable distribution of available income resources and opportunities for men and women we should move forward to keep women and girls need or at a forefront of responses to that countries that have gender inequality so we need to ensure that we raise the tide of everyone not only refugees but also living communities generously hosting them we must always measure our success not just in whether needs are met but also whether through meeting those needs we also empowered those we are serving and worked to ensure greater equality between men and women in 1974 uh, congress signed the piracy amendment requiring peace corps volunteer to actively integrate women in the economic political social and development of their countries Uh, even be a peace corps volunteer promote women equality gender equality through women empowerment through health education business development and by raising awareness of women rights and contribution to their communities last but not least to make possible gender equality we should support our mother our sister reject racist as attitude help women give gain power pay the me pay the same salary for equal work make education gender sensitivity give proper value to women and give power to women even provide anti bias training to our children for whom that make possible gender equality for women in present as well as future scenario at the end beautiful lines by said mega mark women does not need to find their voices they need to be empowered to use it and people need to be urged to listen thank you very much thank you naima now i would uh, request simran to kindly deliberate on the topic simran yes ma'am bachche you can start now naima de sidha aage karne ke may must switch off your mic naima to please switch off the mic naima please switch off your mic she's done it okay simran you can start it's yes, simran it? good morning everyone yes ma'am good morning everyone it's my pleasure to express my views on the topic is gender equality is possible for women in this present scenario women are better off today but still far being from equal 
the issue of gender equality has been certainly improved for women but still at the top of the institute and in various industries we see the faces of the men only gender equality has been a social issue in india and in other countries also from centuries gender equality means that the power should be divided between men and women equally there should be no discrimination in between them few centuries before the situation of the women is very worse even though the birth of the girl child is not considered in the society the birth so the discrimination has been started from the birth itself but today the situation has been totally changed women are leading over the many countries and many field of the countries countries from wrestling to business from business to education even though in politics also women are shining and working equally to the men in today's scenario women have reached at that part of the country and at that field where till now men has not reached everyone has known that when british tried to take over the control over the northern part of our india women queen of jhansi who led her army and fight among the britishers our first woman ips officer dr kiran bedi who joined the indian police service and she was the one woman in her batch among the 80 men even in politics also women are shining we can see that our cabinet minister shrimati samriti irani ji our finance minister they are also the women even in entertainment also women are not lacking behind we have seen many pictures in which heroines and women are leading in role and that women and that pictures are also successful also by this we can say that the women the scenario has changed for women but still from somewhere we have heard we used to see that there is some discrimination occurred with women but why though women are working equally with the men though they are working but did they are getting equal wages as compared to the men no they are not getting equal wages as compared to the men today also in some parts of the country they are celebrating the birth of the boy child then what about the woman that girl who is taking birth it is not her fault that she is a girl it is not her fault so at last i want to conclude with saying that oh human do not think about gender it is only for identification and not for discrimination man and woman both are equal like a sea and the beach so please give them respect and please do not play the game of discrimination please thank you thank you simran uh, now i would request divya i think she has joined by now bachcha you are connected divya yes ma'am i am here yes you can speak on the topic beta okay ma'am thank you uh, good afternoon everyone i am divya rajput from ma third semester so before speaking on the main topic i would like to quote in the words of ravindra nath tagore who rightly said women is the builder and molder of a nation's destiny though delicate and soft as lily she has a heart stronger and bolder than that of a man she is the supreme inspiration for man's onward march now what equality is it is about ensuring that every individual has an equal opportunity to make the most of their lives and talents it is also the belief that no one should have poorer life chances because of the way they were born where they come from what they believe or whether they have a disability a long time ago many women fought for women civil rights and their action changed the society everyone considered and improved women civil rights however there are still some problems in the society women and men should be treated equally in any situation 
for example in work places in home and in public places too i think the main reason between the difference is the physical difference of between men and women before looking at the present scenario let's have a brief historical background and now i will talk about the women civil rights of the past and present so in the 19th century women civil rights were not equal to that of men women were treated poorly and they could not say anything to the society and even to the husband they just followed the men however harriet blatch got up and appealed for women civil rights to society then many women followed her finally their movement succeeded and they got the right to vote it was a very important movement to vote means to take part in the society and even in the politics so equality is the problem of the new society also which still prevails in society there are still issues with men's right and women's right men can get jobs of high position very easily and women have to work and study harder than men women are still discriminated against by society and men for example if a woman wants to be president of a school she has to work and study hard also she has to get an agreement with the husband and the family too and then if she gets the job her salary will be less than that of a man and it is a very unfair reality the next situation is about being a housewife most women who have a job and a family are very busy because most men think that housework is the women's job and women have to do housework and take care of their home and children along with their jobs for me this is very old and a foolish thinking why can't husband and wife to work together and help each other in doing all the household daily chores however some couples do it together and i have seen this personally in my home my father he was a retired captain and he didn't feel ashamed at all in helping my mother in kitchen or doing any other daily chores the roles for men and women are nothing it is just the mindset of the society and that's it so the first thing that everyone has to do is to consider and change their mind step by step a machine cannot solve the problem only human can and the only the gender equality for women will be possible in the present era and a wonderful and a great society will emerge so at the end i would like to conclude in the words of dr rajendra prasad who rightly said our women have a very great part to play in the progress of our country as the mental and physical contact of women with life is much more lasting and comprehensive than that of a man so thank you very much and have a great day ahead thank you divya i uh, thank all the participants so for participating so enthusiastically and uh, you know sharing their views on such a pertinent topic uh, which is uh, the theme of the symposium today uh, now uh, i would uh, request our chief guest um, let us uh, have the pleasure of listening to the words of honorable chief guest dr sunita zarpuri on the pertinent theme of today's program ma'am kindly share your views regarding this okay uh, thank you very much uh, uh, first of all um, a very good afternoon to all of you uh, um, it's my good proud afternoon. privilege to be with the um with the fraternity who are dealing directly with education education enlightenment and empowerment um um at the outset i am very very thankful to dr renu arun gupta vice chairman of my group of institutions um for giving me an opportunity to be with you on this topic which is very very close uh, to my heart um in the sense that today i am in a position when i am talking about gender equality when i am talking about wo- wo- women empowerment when i am talking about girl child uh, um i have to make 101 challenges uh, to be here and talk on this situation so um i am also thankful to um, um dr adit uh, for being all hods of um mayer and of course um 
Dr. Rupa Gupta, who um, who invited me for this opportunity. I, I know um, um, when we talk of women, women empowerment is the requirement of times, and women have been relegated to the background, and it's a global phenomenon. It's not something happening in India. It's a global phenomenon. But then we should also understand that we have a we have had a very very lovely journey when we talk of uh, when we talk of gender equality in present scenario in fact we have a um, um, i wish i had a time to share my um, uh, you know presentation with you but i would like uh, what i heard from uh, speakers uh, they have in fact flagged all the relevant points uh, when we talk of gender equality gender equality is something where uh, you know there is a he and she syndrome in society he and she syndrome and when we talk of gender equality gender justice begins at home uh, somebody very rightly mentioned we have to have a gender justice begins from mother um, because we have a very very important role to play unless and until mother has a self esteem she plays a you know she plays a role where more or less she becomes a role model for her uh, daughters and sons because it is parenting which matters ultimately when we talk of gender equality and when we see this gender equality it is socially constructed everything is socially constructed these roles have been given and um, i know uh, somebody one of the speakers very rightly pointed out that we are talking of women who are living in rural areas where wherein more than 6 lakh villages in india where women have to face so many so many uh, you know difficult situations when we talk of uh, when we talk of so that's why uh, when we talk of their existence in totality we have to understand then that in india if we see right from 1975 to sustainable development goals uh, you know those goals are right, uh, right from 2015 those goals were given to 2030 we are doing something to protect this vulnerable group of um, um you know, group and sections of the society you will agree with me when i say there is no dearth of laws there is no dearth of legal framework but then the problem is that there is no voice somebody used that we need visibility and voice mechanisms how to go about it i have a right in the constitution but it's there in the statute book just for the name sake nobody goes and asserts the right though we have a uh, if you see uh, we are talking of Uh, right from the 1975 when we had an in, uh, international year of women first which we celebrated in maxco this conference right from that we have started doing some interventions to take care about status of women and from 1975 i'm sure all of you know that 1975 to 1985 was uh, you know it was celebrated as a decade for the women with A lot of international conferences taking place, and you know, uh, in right from the Copenhagen, and then we saw in 1995 one of the most important international conference which took took place in Nairobi. Again, number of forward-looking strategies were adopted for protecting this vulnerable section of the society, that is, the women. As I told you, it's a global phenomenon. It's not something, excepting uh, as rightly pointed by one of the speakers, um, uh, I believe. Uh, yes, Naima uh, pointed out that in uh, Nordic countries, you know, you, uh, Scandinavian countries, excepting those countries, most of the countries um, have problems. I'll be sharing with you some of the uh, some of the um, figures, and you will be surprised because. Uh, if you see the latest uh, i was just going through the latest uh, uh, statistics on the subject and you will be surprised that when we talk of global gender gap report of 2020 itself and you know 20, uh, 2020 has been very bad from the covid point covid pandemic was declared and we have seen number of problems for women you know domestic violence students cannot go um, uh, to the colleges because more or less everything is being done virtually and we see number of cases have come up to these national commissions and state commissions for women for counseling because now you know because of this work from home thing happening everybody is at home and now you know um, um, we see just those tiktok things coming you know there was a very good joke um i would like to share with you um one of the husbands was working in the um home 
and uh, wife said um, did you uh, did you notice how many uh, whistles pressure cooker has given he said um, he was on the, he was on the call office call so his boss replies madam panch ho gayi so that means um, we have to go a long way when we talk of care economy because women is working 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 whether it is a workplace or a workplace like we are in offices colleges you know things like that but we have to talk about the women which is still a very unequal world where women in the rural areas in the tribal areas or uh, the so called homemakers you know their visibility in the women in the agriculture sector they are contributing 70% to the economy but they are uh, uh, you know we have not we, we are not you know giving credit to it so that's what we have to facilitate that's why whenever i talk on this gender equality i say it's incomplete unless and until there is a gender response to governance and you will be surprised to know that yes for the last one decade number of interventions have taken place you must have heard the name of gender budgeting now we are talking of gender budgeting gender budgeting is what that we have to specifically mainstream the development of women men boys girls everybody and only then there will be human development in the real sense of the word so uh, i would like to share with you this is very important that we have to improve for this we have to improve the political uh, representation though it's on rise but it's not the way it should have been i would like to share with you uh, this global gender uh, uh, grab report which benchmarks out of 153 countries on their progress towards what towards gender parity in four dimensions and these four dimensions are very important what are these four dimensions these are number 1 economic participation economic participation and opportunity i i pose you a question are women and men same so far as the economic participation and opportunity is concerned no ma'am they are not no, them no ma'am no, ma no no it's not very very all. unequal world it's very very unequal world yes ma'am okay and the second point is health again health political empowerment health and survival and the most important if you ask me the most important catalyst which acts uh, as a catalyst for overall development when we talk of equality it is the educational attainment and in this year report if you will see you will be surprised that in 2018 index india had to work for there was a 200 years gap but now um, we have marked our improvement we are at at a place of 108 so that means 108 years difference is there in other words to some extent we have improved our political participation and if you remember for that the the, the, the responsible thing is we had a very very important panchayati raj system where women's participation is very very important in every panchayat women should be there so directly or indirectly women is being involved um, in educational field also we see there is improvement though it's not at par with men there are number of dropouts at secondary stage at tertiary stages but yes uh, uh, the educational uh, you know things is similarly uh, we have seen that government is giving an uh, almost number of schemes you must have heard beti padao beti bachao scheme largely beti schemes number of schemes are to improve the A girl child development to improve the women to improve overall wherever the impact whatever is so what i am trying to tell you is that if we talk of figures it will take 95 years to close the gender gap in political representation between men and women it will take us 95 years as compared to other countries with women in 2009 holding 25% uh, 25% of parliamentary that's lower uh, um, lower house seats and 21.2% of ministerial positions so what is required as rightly pointed by one of the speakers that we require more and more role models somebody named um uh, uh, nuri ma'am ma uh, your pepsi cola ki hai but there is no dearth of uh, you know motivational um, she, she once related in one of her speeches she said that 
when I was made CEO, I was very happy and busting with a lot of this thing. When I went home back, my mother said, that's okay, you are CEO, you are very happy, but you know, we are short of, we are running short of milk. We need to get first carton of milk. And then, you know, so that is, she said that, yes, domestic, at domestic front, we need to be more efficient as compared to, uh, you know, in other fields. So that's why our expertise, um, um, our visibility um, is more required by um, men or women when we talk. Even women, they, they expect us more to be um, okay in care economy. So the question is, how do we facilitate? What is the response of the government? And that is why these, um, these, um, these reports which we publish, the governments are required to work on those. And that's why we have number of schemes, interventions. As of now, I would like to, um, 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 uh, I would like to inform all of you. There's no dearth of schemes. There's no dearth of laws. We have a number of laws. If you will see, our constitution is full, wherein we have art right from art Article 41 to Article 21 of the constitution, equality provisions. Everybody is equal before law. Rule of law is there. Everybody, men, women. There is, there is to be have. We, we should have a parity as to wages, and that's why these things are being taken into. You must, you must be knowing in government now. We have a, uh, we have a uh, after care leave for women. They can, they can take. They get three months, um, and they, they get, um, you know, two years leave. It is, it is again to see that they can take care of their children uh, till eighteen years of their children. They, they are entitled to get this leave. Similarly, we have now provision for paternity leaves. We have equality wage, everything is equal. And I would like to um, um, inform you, since you're all educators, I would like to motivate you that there's nobody stopping, nobody's going to stop. I am conducting number of battles of KS and IS, and recently I'm really happy to see this number is increasing. Just in my last 267 batch of officers, civil servants officers, JKS officers, out of them, 100 were girls. So that's how we have to improve the visibility. So, in fact, those 100 officers competed with other males and, um, and they are there. And you should see the attitude, the aptitude, the, the way, because what we have to understand, it's not making laws, it's not facilitating. What we have to see is that we have to see how to implement those laws, how to facilitate implementation of those laws so that Maximum benefit goes to the beneficiaries for whom those schemes have been formulated. To tell you frankly, um, as of now, we see uh, women don't come. Women don't come out of because um, uh, Rupa Madam had uh, um, asked that I should talk about something. We have a very very important law at uh, present which women can take. Uh, you know, women particularly the girl uh, child, the um, uh, the girls who are you know in this education sector, who are in the secondary education sector, they can take benefit is that of right to information. It is a right available to every citizen of India who can go and seek information on any topic, any from any government. Whatever, whatever information is available to the parliamentarians, that information under this act is available to. So it's a very important tool of governance, but sorry, with due respect, we don't. We have a dependency system. Some male member should come and accompany me. We have a reasons. I will not move out of my house in the night unless and until there is a male escort. Why? Why is it so? Because I'm sorry, with due respect, we are still living in a dependency syndrome. As I told you, he and she syndrome. Uh, the other day, um, I got, a I mean, um, uh, last year, I got an opportunity to conduct a session uh, with my, you know, case batch officers. They were male and female. And then I uh, gave them a one exercise. I had a time with you that will try to, uh, we have to try to understand the power relationships and identities. Somebody talked of he and she identity. You see, as a male DM, how you respond to a particular situation and as a female DM, how you respond to a particular situation. Suppose I am a male DM and I am asked to move out of a night um, because there's some riot has taken place in the city. So what will be my approach as a female DM, whether I am powerful, 
whether I'm powerless, whether I'm not so powerful, whether I'm not so powerless. So uh, we gave them four situations. And believe me, we got four types of answers from male DMs and female DMs. Similarly, we changed identities, uh, male student and female student, male graduate and female graduate. And uh, we gave different types of questions related to family, uh, related to dowry, related to marriage, related to education. You know, we gave them different. And I was surprised to see that in most of the things where we have a structural society, societal discriminations, they prevail because of these identities. So power relation and identities have a very, very important role to play. How can we change that? It is a fact. I cannot because of this. Unless you change the security measures outside, you make it very nice for me. I happened to be in New York and I was surprised that midnight, um, my son took me to that Times Square and I was surprised. Everybody's moving and nobody's scared. And um, he said, um, in, in fact, people prefer to visit these sites because it's all illuminated with lights and big things and all that. That Times Square is a lovely place in New York. And said, people prefer to come. And I saw small girls, teenagers, you know, enjoying uh, there and seeing and having sightseeing and all that. So what I'm trying to tell you is that we have either we have to have a that secure place where I will not be dependent on my male escort. As of now, it's a fact, as I told you. Uh, if I have to go out, I will, uh, I'll ask my husband, would you come, um, please, I have to go to, or my son, whosoever is available. So this is dependency. Similarly, uh, ladies, I know all of you are earning. I would like to quote you uh, one small example. I hope I have time, ma'am. Uh, yes, I hope I have time. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, um, I would like to. Yes, um, I would like to share with you uh, because um, um, I told. Um, uh, I, I, you, I mean, uh, I was working, and uh, whenever I used to come back, I would always tell my son, "Why are you keeping your things? So why don't you manage your things, books, uh, uniform, things? You know?" He said, "Maya koi ladki hu." I mean, he was in fourth, fifth class. I'm. I'm uh, in fact, Meyer ke products hai, humare, um, um, to, I said, because he had, usne dekha tha, my mother, though she is working, but when she comes back, there is a role change. She becomes, you know, that domesticated type of, uh, you know, she has, uh, I have a right to have tea. My When my husband comes back, he has a right to have tea, everything ready. And I when I come back home, I don't, I have to first prepare it and then, so, uh, okay, uh, I'm just giving you a live example. After he got married, uh, he's in US there, five, six months, uh, five, six years, he saw the life there. And uh, my, my younger son, he took picture of him washing dishes. He said, Dora, Bartan Dora. You know, what was that? That was, he was trying to show me that, no, in US you can't afford, everybody has to work. Everybody here, here also, both men and women are working, but we have not changed our mindset. It is expected that women will come. Uh, only then we will have tea. And you know, uh, I would like to remember, um, I would like to share with you, when I used to go office after 5, 30, 6, 30, my mother would not take tea. She's, I was waiting for you. She would make it very respectful. But I was not uh, drinking my tea alone. I waited for you. But in other words, she had this expectation, you know, well, I deserve a cup of tea from her hand. Uh, maybe um, in, there was total <laughs> out of love also. But yes, one thing she had that out of, uh, out of responsibility, because you see, we are still living in mindset where garbage in, garbage out, out. Gigo. We are still living in Gigo. Gigo means whatever I have. Um, whatever I have seen happening to me, I want others should also see that. So that's why when we talk of gender equality, it's not the men who have to change. Men have to change complement. They, they will have to have a, role, a complementary role, but it's the women they have to change. Women decide whether I should give best of my best food to my son and not to my daughter. Whether the sibling care is to be done by the daughter and not by my uh, son. I'm sorry. 
ladies and gentlemen we are still living in times where we have gendered language gendered uh, gendered colors gendered way of um, dealing uh, um, with uh, uh, children gendered way of doing things because uh, it will not be approved in the society we are still ha having those societal things uh, if if a, if a lady happens to excel in her field there will be instant character assassination instant character assassination it will not be that she excelled because she deserved it because she was efficient because we are still guided by traditional uh, problem as to nature and nurture i call it nature and nurture controversy unless and until we come out of this nurturing thing we are still nurture uh, nature there is a difference male female very good but we are not coming out of that social construct nurturing outward given a chance we have kalpana chawlas but we can just count them their numbers who got opportunity who overcome their threats and insecurities but the large number of women are that though they are contributing but there is no recognition though they are Uh, uh, they are visible so far as their fields are concerned let's talk of the females in the um, agriculture sector 70% of agriculture work is being done but abhi bhi hamara nomenclature hai farmer when we talk farmer you it means male chairman male now we are changing chairpersons pehle pehle aapne dekha certificate mein sirf father's name hota tha ye to humne advocacy advocacy kar kar ke kar kar ke that we are going we are going very soon to uh, fill this gap but for this lot of requirements jaise maine aapko bola gender budgeting gender mainstreaming gender women in development to women and development wala approach lena hai mainstreaming karne ki zarurat hai gender budgets separate budgets nahi rakhne hain we have to see where are the gaps there can be gap, gap in some situations um, boys ki taraf se gap hoga Ma uh, uh, males ki taraf se gap hoga so ओवरऑल ह्यूमन डेवलपमेंट इंडेक्स की बात जब बात हम करते हैं जेंडर एम्पावरमेंट मेजर्स की जब हम बात करते हैं तो वी हैव टू सी पर्टिकुलरली एज आई टोल्ड यू फोर थिंग्स आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दोज फोर फोर थिंग्स नीड टू बी टेकन केयर ऑफ दैट इज द इकोनॉमिक पार्टिसिपेशन एजुकेशनल अटेनमेंट हेल्थ एंड सर्वाइवल स्ट्रेटजीज एंड पोलिटिकल एम्पावरमेंट दैट्स वाई यू सी नाउ ऑफ ऑफ लेट फॉर वीमेन um for political participation lot of debates are taking place lot of interventions are taking place for health we have um, uh, rural health schemes are in here women ko keep um, health ko protect karne ke liye icds mein full scale hai 0 to 6 level ke liye cover karne ke liye there are number of interventions uh, being taken by the government but this world is still unworld we need to uh, we need to improve our um, uh, overall jo isme um, ye hai um, dekha gaya hai abhi women are not coming forward women are not coming they want everything nobody is going to give them their rights on the platter there is no dearth of rights there is no dearth of right um, you know laws but it is women who have to come forward and all the stakeholders have to play a very very important role and ultimately um, Uh, when we talk of uh, when we talk of women i uh, i would like to show you one part of my presentation can i with your permission just give me 5 yes. minutes yes uh, i would like to present yes. when we talk of uh, gender equality and development relationship to development is uh, a screen share ho gaya aap dekh lijiye sir Uh, is my presentation uh, visible? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Just no, one. Give me one minute. Give me one. No. Let's go into Android skin to cut it. No, no. That one. This one. This one. Yes. I want to show you. Yes. Okay. Yes. so when we talk of uh, gender equality and development we have to see that gender equality uh, has very very uh, important things when we talk of empowering women empowering women of all 
particularly ruler women particularly ruler women i uh, because we have to enhance access to education and economic opportunities can lead to improved productivity higher labor force market participation wage equality and productivity it will also we have to see that uh, it should impact on fertility and well being of future generation that is the health related we see most of the women are uh, 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 most of the women um, face anemia they they are negligent so far as their health other parameters are concerned and the most important thing is the enhanced voice which will lead to more representation and inclusive government because i told you when we talk of uh, uh, when we talk of international milestones right from 230 the plan is there nothing we have i mean when we talk of sustainable development goals everything is included um, prior to that we were pursuing uh, these millennium development goals and these international conferences beijing particularly beijing platform for action which said women and education uh, which uh, identified critical issues for action women and um, um, economic development uh, women and marriage as a institution Uh, women and uh, you know even in militancy insurgency there are a number of things with which women is to be so that is why all these things were introduced that is gender empowerment major human development index gender development all these things were um, improved and now when we talk of the sustainable development goals they um, we have to achieve them until 2030 so that means one more decade but for this when we talk of gender equality we will will have to have uh, we will have to take into consideration that when we talk of the top country for gender parity remains iceland and for 11th last 11 years se iceland hi ek top country hai jo gender parity mein sabse aage hai jaise ki naima ne bhi bataya us us country pursue karti wahan pe women hi male se zyada aage hai when when we talk of education pass educational facilities when we talk of employment when we talk of health facilities other things so iceland is the top uh, top most country the most improved countries were albania ethiopia mali mexico and spain in fact they also improved their statistics then we talk of this international milestones and out of 149 countries 101 improved their score, scores in 2019 that means all countries directly or indirectly are improving their present score and um, um, you know if, uh, if we if we see 48 um, other countries saw unchanged while the top 10 uh, percentile saw their scores improve by 3.3% lekin 48 countries are still there out of these these 159 countries they have not budged so far as their improvement statistics and data is concerned so there are around 35 countries which are pursuing these things they are having um, gender parity in education and in healthcare we see 48 countries have achieved near parity and 71 have closed at least 97% of their gap so that means yes something is being done globally when we talk of gender parity it stands at 68.6% uh, and the bottom 10 countries have closed just 40% so they have to um um usme india bhi aa jata hai in fact india pakistan bangladesh um, we have to gear up in the uh, last 50 years we have seen 85 states have no female head of states can you imagine no female head of states but in terms of economic participation the gender gap will take another 257 years uh, this was as per 2000 um, um, it, but now it has come down it is now 2002 uh, years so that means what i am trying to tell you that these international milestones directly or indirectly are globally taking uh, you know uh, some interventions are taking place and directly or indirectly it's having impact on developing uh, the women and men uh, which is the requirement Uh, because i told you gender mainstream is streaming is very important but in spite of having gender sensitive uh, we we see that um, uh, when we when we talk of uh, when we talk of implementation there are still male biases um, there are still uh, mindsets um, you know still the care economy it's to be done by the, the, there is no formal 
um, you know, division bit of labor. Even in the labor class, I was surprised to see that uh, when women, uh, women, they are equally contributing in the labor market, but when they come back, they have to, uh, they have to, you see, manage household, whatever little they have to do. And that's why, as a result, they, um, they, um, they delegate their responsibility to their um, small, um, small girls. That means they have to go for sibling care. You understand what sibling care is? Sibling care is on bhi छोटी उम्र में उनको बच्चे भी पालने पड़ते हैं घर का काम भी करना पड़ता है क्योंकि उनकी मदर वर्क उनकी मदर कहीं लेबर में काम करने के लिए गई है दिहाड़ी कमाने के लिए गई है सो दीज आर जेंडर ब्लाइंड एंड वी हैव टू हैव मोर एंड मोर जेंडर सेंसिटिव एंड जेंडर रिडिस्ट्रीब्यूटिव स्ट्रेटजीज जो एग्जिस्टिंग स्ट्रक्चरल चेंजेस हमें लानी है डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के लिए और रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज और रोल्स को चेंज करने के लिए दैट इज दैट इज वॉट वी टॉक जेंडर रिस्पॉन्स टू गवर्नेंस and we have to change our mindset from jo welfare tha mother care paisu hamari scheme sirf inhi cheezon pe hoti thi lekin uske baad ab hame more and more producers agar aap dekhenge papad wale they are doing wonderful business they may not doing it number of case studies are there in the in the name of self help groups seva services number of interventions are being now done so that means empowerment post 80 is taking place and it is more than now you see after 1980s it's more than um, 40 years so we have to shift our gears and when we talk of uh, women in development and now we talk of gender and development it's not women only or we have to remember when we talk of empowerment of women we are empowering the whole family as the mahatma gandhi has rightly said he said uh, educate one woman it's going to have the impact the whole family will be benefited and that's what you have to understand we have to talk of empowerment of women in holistic way when we talk of empowerment it is power over control and decision making i mean sorry violence intimidation patriarchal bargain still women are not sure they are cooking but they are not sure what what they have to eat what they have to cook they they don't have a decision What 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 my child is going to study? So power relations, lack of power relations, and lack of identities and self-esteem is a big thing. Here we want to. Here we need to make some interventions. We we need to make some changes so that we can improve the gender gap parity, which I was talking about. Again, empowerment with group. Like I told you, now we say we have to make groups, women groups. We have to formulate. NGOs have to work. We have national commissions for women. so in groups how women can improve the voice mechanisms how they can advocate for their rights they can go and seek information they can make use of the laws which have which are there i'm sorry there are number of laws which have never been applied they're just on the statute book for um, just their for ornamental purpose they they have never been used so this is very important here interventions is the requirement similarly when we talk of power to women when we talk of it is herself somebody talked um, you know when i study vocational whatever at least i should be self reliant so women in economy generating um, uh, small scale industries we are talking of entrepreneurship so this is very very important important when we talk of power relations so ladies and gentle when we talk of importance of gender you have to understand that uh, legal rights gender budgeting we have to have lot of things to be done for protecting the interests of the women who are involved with the care economy how to facilitate like you you saw the ujwala scheme women had to go to uh, very bahut hi dur dur tak jana padta tha firewood collect karne ke liye ujwala scheme has given them you know automated way mein gas pe wo ab cooking kar sakte isi tarah se in india we have a water crisis still women have to go unko pani collect karne ke liye itna time lagta hai unko unko facilitate karne ke liye unke liye separate bathing places nahi hai unke liye separate toilets nahi hai badi badi building aap dekhenge but you will not see anything separately done for women or for specially abled um, i would like here to um, go to an, um, in us i was surprised whenever i would visit any place first and the foremost requirement was for the specially abled people 
उनके लिए रैंच बना हुआ उनके लिए स्पेशल टॉयलेट बना हुआ उनके लिए स्पेशल फैसिलिटीज प्रोवाइड की गई वीमेन के लिए सो वट आई एम ट्राइंग टू टेल यूज दैट वेन वी टॉक ऑफ वेन वी टॉक ऑफ जेंडर इशूज इन टोटेलिटी द फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट वी हैव टू मेक वीमेन सो कॉम्पैटेबल दैट कॉम्पैटेबल विद द सिचुएशन um there should be role clarity i mean they 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 have to come out of the dependency he she syndrome and here the just uh, it becomes uh, it just begins from the men it just becomes from the women in the home it begins gender justice if you ask me begins from the home and then it goes to the um, you know um, community level national level and international level so when we talk of development intervention it should take into consideration it should take into consideration that what benefit it will bring to a women suppose aajkal dur daraz ilake mein agar hum jaate hain bachcho i have seen i was in rajouri wahan pe there was a, uh, i had gone in connection with some of the trainings for women development corporation and i was surprised to see most of the women came but they said no no we can't stay here only hum hum unko vocational trainings de dilwa le the humne unko uske tahat humne kaha aap apne aap apne accounts ko liye still in india 50% of women they don't have their permanent account they are not account holders in banks can you imagine so what 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 type of benefit they will take what, so we wanted them to make more and more self help groups so when we talk of development development should not be lo- lopsided it should be intrinsic it should be holistic so only then that intervention will function so to pursue that intervention there is the requirement of the all stakeholders particularly media plays a very important role ngo plays a very important role members of the civil society plays a very important role it's not simple to have a state intervention unless and, and until that state intervention is pursued by all the stakeholders only then um, it will it will be progressive in connotation so when we talk of i think um, um um when we talk of women when we talk of gender equality we have to improve the self esteem of women uh, with due respect with due respect to all the women you're all um, role models uh, but it is still uh, that we are having some kind of inferior um, inferiority complex so that that we have to take into consideration similarly uh, we have to we have to have a schemes we have to have a policy framework in such a way wherein we can realize the full potential of both men and women and uh, when we talk of sustainable development goals so, uh, and gender equality and empowerment of women in totality we have to um, understand that um, everybody has to take a pla- uh, has to take a part um, uh, because when we talk of gender when we talk of development that's not in gendered it is endangered so um um i would like to there is more i think i was given some time so um so uh, i would like to now wind up um i'm i'm very happy all the speakers um have um, all the speakers have highlighted and emphasized on the points particularly uh, palak she talked about having change in mindset and um, shikha um, sharma she talked about um, uh, improving our gender ga- gaps and fairly treating all the um, men and the, uh, women uh, in the society and um, 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 so far as um, angishri angishri i hope i am pronouncing your name rightly she talked uh, she also talked about self sufficiency and multi dimensional role which the women play and um, though they are excelling but we need to Uh, we we need to still facilitate that um, um uh, and naima also she also talked about the social construction visibility gen- gender mainstreaming and she said that we should also have schemes like nordic countries uh, so that uh, you know women are empowered and women have a complementary roles play talking about simran she also highlighted she gave the uh, she gave the example of uh, kiran bedi and um, um i think um, visibility is also the requirement of time uh, we we need to we need to uh, that's why i said women is contributing um, more than men when we talk but that is that is not in cash how many times i pick up glass how many times i wash uh, dishes how many times um, that, that that work is not you know care economy 
um, real economy related is not um, it's not encashed so we need to we need to make it more visible and sim similarly divya she talked about that um, um, she talked about a very important thing that women more and more women are now working we need to improve workplace and that's why uh, we have to have more implementation strict implementation of laws though in government we have you know sexual harassment committees are formulated um, but we we need to have more and more and she also talked about that um, um, we need to improve the lot of the women who are directly as um, in, in who are in the care economy and that's why here i would like to tell all the speakers that yes so far as the intervention on the part of the government is concerned it is um, um, um when we talk of intervention on the part of government now more and more programs we are doing on gender budget we do gap analysis in a particular area what is required and accordingly the accordingly that intervention is then formulated in the form of a policy framework and that's done so that means gender budgeting has a very very important role for gender budgeting we need to have a gender mainstream and um yes um we have to change the self esteem of the women also um thank you very much um once again i'm really enlightened with the um with the speakers they have uh, in fact um, they have brought out all the uh, all what is required but one thing which uh, which i would definitely like to mention that in covid times when we talk of gender equality more and more problems are being faced by the women uh, so um, in this connection uh, all of you must be aware um, i got a very good opportunity to go to labasna that's the ies academy and there we were you know uh, uh, from un women un women is doing a lot of work for protecting the globally protecting the interests of the women and um, um, from un women um, uh, we were trained as national trainers for gender responsive governance and um, um, i was really impressed the way they told us how to go about and uh, i am told that in pandemic also they are doing lot of lot many studies how to protect because the maximum impact out of this covid has gone to the women most of the retrenchments taking place um, most of the bachche bhi unke ghar mein rehte hain unke male members ki jobs gayi unki apni jobs gayi unka jo overall keemte badh gayi bahut si problems jo ghar mein maintain karna hai so maximum brunt is to be borne by the women globally and in that case number of studies and how to go about it how to take care about these things are being done thank you very much uh, once again giving me an opportunity uh, to be with you thank you so much sunita ma'am komal ma'am just thank give me few minutes uh sunita ma'am uh, i've listened to so many speeches but this is for the first time i have listened to such a powerful speech and uh, i'm feeling so much energized and i'm really really grateful to you that you gave me the opportunity to listen to you for the very first time and i've learned many new you know terms today which i was not uh, you know i think most of us were not aware of like to be visible to have an enhanced voice and we i think we are lacking in those areas we are not making us of visible and you know we are doing our mundane in you know, a you know, duty and job we think this is a part of our nature and we keep on doing it but the, for the very first time you know after listening to you you know i'm feeling powerful i'm feeling energized and uh, i think we need to make us uh, visible like you said and remove this dependency syndrome so yeah. thank you so much ma'am for your address and i'm really really thankful um that you know you accepted our invitation and you you know uh, gave us an opportunity to listen to you so thank you once again ma'am so komal ma'am you can please carry on thank you ma'am once again uh, you know this is the time for the announcement of the results of the symposium and uh, the results have been composed by our respected judges uh, mrs uh, manjuri sengal and uh, this is manju valli so for the press the results are that uh, the uh, third position has been uh, uh, you know uh, the third place position has been scored by simran ma'am let's give a big round of applause 
Thank you, ma'am. The third uh, position has been uh, given to Simran, and the second position has been backed by uh, Anjushri. Second position has been backed by Anjushri, and uh, the first is Palak Srivastava. Thank you, ma'am. First one is Palak Srivastava, and she spoke. Uh, in the first uh, position only because Divya was not there at that time. So uh, it's really uh, a thing of, you know, uh, great uh, pleasure that uh, our students have, uh, you know, spoken on this pertinent issue and have been, you know, heard by such a renowned uh, person like uh, Galpuri Ma'am. And she has been always here and uh, deliberating on uh, very, very uh, good things which have always helped us here in our institution. Uh, so now I proceed further and I request Dr. Ronika Sharma, who is HOD UG department, to kindly present the formal vote of thanks. Ma'am, please. Thank you, Komal. Uh, it is an honor and great elation for me to extend a formal vote of thanks to all for gracing this event. First of all, on behalf of all of us present here, I would like to sincerely thank our chief guest, Dr. Sunita Zalpuri, Madam, Dean Trainee Welfare Professor and hence Center for GG and AR, JNK Impart, for accepting our invitation to be the chief guest for today's program. It is indeed a matter of great pride to have such a vibrant officer like her amidst us. We are truly blessed to have your warm company and blessing on this great event and pray and wish for many more to come. Thank you so much, ma'am. I would also take this opportunity to thank Dr. Renu Gupta, Vice Chairperson, my group of institutions in absentia. We are very fortunate to have young, dynamic and progressive director and principal, Dr. Atit Gupta, for his continuous guidance and support. I extend my thanks to him also in absentia. I would like to extend my special thanks to Mrs. Rupa Gupta, Director and Coordinator, Shrimati Shanti Gupta, Center for Women's Studies, Maya, for providing her valuable support in organizing today's symposium competition. Thank you so much, ma'am. I thank judges of today's event, Mrs. Manju Wali, Convener Co-Curricular Committee, Model Academy School, and Mrs. Manjuri Sahigal, coordinator middle wing of Model Academy School for their fair judgment. My thanks are also due to Dr. Mool Raj Sharma, HOD PG department, Dr. Nishta Rana, and Dr. Monica Bajaj, deputy heads of PG and UG departments respectively. I also thank faculty members of both UG and PG department and my dear students and participants. I extend my special thanks to Mrs. Komal Sharma and Ms. Nivnidika, members of Shirimati Shanti Gupta Center for Women's Studies, for conducting the program in a well-coordinated manner. Last but not the least, I thank Dr. Bharti Tandon, Associate Professor and Convener Media and Publication Committee for media and coverage, and the technical staff for their uninterrupted technical support. Once again, I thank one and all present here. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Sunita, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay, you. let's meet for um, um, Yes, ma'am. Definitely. Definitely. Once <laughs> again, ma'am. Thank you so much. <laughs> Pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Thank you Actually, I wanted more time, but anyway, fine. Thank you. I wanted to quote you many things. Interventions kya kya kar Definitely, ma'am. One more session with you. Thank you, ma'am. Sure, sure, sure. All the best to you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. <laughs>